Hi, this is Michael Oral from MobileBurn.com, and today I have with me Motorola Zoom tablet for Verizon Wireless. This is the first Android 3.0 Honeycomb tablet device to hit the market. So I'm going to get right into it because I have a lot of ground to cover, but uh, we've got a 10.1 inch display here. It has 1280 by 800 pixel resolution. Um, not nearly as nice as the display on the iPad, uh, just doesn't have the brightness, the sharpness, um, the overall clarity of the iPad's display, but still it seems to work pretty well and it seems to work quite accurately. Let's take a look at the hardware design. Um, volume controls, I guess we'll call this the upper left hand corner, it depends on how you have it oriented, but we'll assume that it's meant to be used here since Motorola and Verizon are written this way. So we've got volume control up here and on the other edge it's not really much to see. Up top there is a three and a half millimeter headphone jack and a slot where the micro SD card and SIM card for the LTE upgrade will be. Now right now there is no uh, support for either of those right now so not even a micro SD card that's going to come later. There's 32 gig built into the device and you'll be able to add up to 32 gig additional by using that micro SD card slot later. On the bottom here we've got uh, just a couple of bolts there. That is a micro USB connector, micro HDMI and then some power uh, contacts for the the docking stations which I'll show you and then that's where the power cord plugs in directly um, why it's a separate one from the micro USB I don't really know but that's what they're doing here let's take a look at the back it's a, kind of a soft touch but not really uh, it's just a matte finish I guess you would call it here speaker grills for stereo speakers power button right up here in the uh, corner so you can easily reach around and grab it with your finger it works pretty well then there's the dual LED flash for the 5 megapixel camera. The camera can shoot HD video as well. Um, not too much else to see in the back here. The forward facing camera, 2 megapixel camera up front for video chatting and things like that. Just reactivate the device here and um, grab the lock and drag it over to unlock the home screen. In terms of weight, this is 730 grams. It's a almost exactly the same as the iPad. It's a little bit heavier than LG's Optimus Tab which weighs 630 grams and only has an 8.9 inch display. Uh, seems to work pretty well though in terms of hand holdability and the change to aspect ratio makes it easier to thumb type. Let's see if I can go in and create a new email message here just so you can see how it works. I'll go to the compose area and I can pretty easily even from behind a camera type in a message and it works accurately too. In terms of what powers everything here, we've got a dual core NVIDIA Tegra 2 processor, each core running it up to 1 gigahertz in speed and there's also 1 gigabyte of uh, DDR2, that's dual channel RAM backing it all up which helps increase the speed a little bit. Overall dimensions, 12.9 uh, millimeters thick is what Motorola is claiming. It says 249.1 uh, millimeters on the lo long way and 167.8 uh, across the uh, short dimension. Um, nice, comfortable system here. Here's my friend Brandon. Let's see if we can pull up Brandon quickly on the uh, YouTube player. You can see him going right there. Turn the volume up. Pull up the camera here so we can take a look at it. Interesting controls right here. It's very easy to uh, switch between different shooting modes and everything. Get your settings as well. Just press the shutter button here, on screen shutter button. You can also actually long press it make sure you get focus first and then take the photo by releasing that way you can uh, focus on one thing then recompose the shot you can see all the photos down here in the gallery the ones we just shot and some other ones I've shot earlier overall been uh, pretty pleased with the camera if the focus doesn't look too great when you're uh, looking at it on screen but the, the images themselves seem to come out pretty well. In terms of battery life, Motorola is claiming that this is good for up to 10 hours of video playback. I'm not really giving too many other specifics at this point in time though and it's not a user changeable battery so you can't get to it anyway and swap it out. 
in terms of a wireless connectivity, not, naturally there's Bluetooth support, but there's also uh, 802.11bgnn working on the 2.4 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz uh, bands for Wi-Fi connectivity, which is really kind of nice. And of course this device works on Verizon Wireless's uh, 3G network right now. Of course it'll work on the 4G network later, as I mentioned, once they put in the uh, added hardware requirement. And you're actually going to have to take this either to a store or mail it in. Um, they're not sure exactly how the program's going to function, but it is an actual upgrade to the device. So you're going to have to give up your device for at least a short while to get that LTE um, module put into it. So here's a quick look at some of the features of the device. There's a bunch of shortcuts up here. I can uh, start music up, for example. Change volume. Switch tracks. I have a hardware home button. I'm going to hit the hardware search key right here and I'll just start searching. See, uh, Motorola is coming up. Use the arrow keys to navigate to Motorola Zoom and we'll get Google search results on that. Pressing the menu button here brings up these menu items just as if you hit it on the screen. Overall I found the keyboard to work really well. I've been uh, quite pleased with it and using it quite a bit with uh, some of the docking stations. Which I'll... So here are the two docking stations. This is the simple one. It just has the uh, power connector down here and the micro USB. Uh, auxiliary port for audio in the back and then power plugs in here so you could hook it up to a separate set of speakers but if you want to use something a little more elaborate this one here has uh, full audio support built into it. There's speakers built into this base here and it uh, comes with uh, HDMI capability as well as power micro USB so you can plug a regular micro HDMI cable into it and then connect it directly to a television set. Uh, sounds not super fantastic out of this but you get a heck of a lot more bass out of, out of this device here than you do out of the dual speakers that are built into the zoom itself. So that's a quick look at the hardware for the Motorola Zoom. Um, I have a couple of other videos showing you exactly how Honeycomb works because all the Honeycomb tablets are running the stock UI at this point. Uh, that will change in future models, I'm sure. Uh, HCC has promised to release a Honeycomb version of its flyer, which has a custom Sense UI. But for now, everything looks the same, so I'm going to put all the Honeycomb type stuff into a separate video. Check that out. And again, that's the Motorola Zoom for Verizon Wireless. I'm Michael Oral for MobileBurn.com.